Hi, this is Mary Plummer with Ripple Training, here to show you some of the new features in Logic Pro 10.3. Here you can see a back-to-back -back comparison of the 10.3 interface with the new modern look. However, if you look closer, you'll see that the user interface is nearly identical to the previous version. This is the streamlined interface, and here I'll switch to the advanced interface to show you the specific changes. The LCD displays the same information, however, in the previous version the display menu was located on the left, and now it's moved to the right. Just click the menu arrow and you'll have access to the same options and customization features. Now check out the metronome button, which will keep time visually during playback. A new horizontal auto zoom button has joined the vertical auto zoom in the project window. So now you can quickly resize all of your tracks both vertically and horizontally to fit the window. In the track display preferences, you'll find dark, bright, and custom settings for your workspace background, as well as contrast controls for the grid lines. You can also turn on loop shading, so you can easily differentiate the original region from the loop segments. Here's one of my favorite new features. You can now see the entire audio file or handles for easier trimming in the timeline. The one thing you'll find different in the library is if you navigate into a submenu, you can back up to the main instrument list by clicking the name below the list. Previously, this feature was located above the library. When you're ready to mix, there's now a true stereo pan option. Just right-click the pan knob in the inspector and choose the stereo pan mode. Here you can discreetly adjust the left and right channels for precision control of the stereo image. The new interface is not only brighter, but it's more colorful. If you use color to organize your projects, that is. Here in the color palette, you'll find another row of 24 colors. For the next new feature, I'm going to change my secondary tool menu to the fade tool. So I can show you how to create fades on multiple regions simultaneously. Just shift select the different regions that you'd like to include, then command drag the edge of a selected region with the fade tool. Once you've created the fades, you can adjust them individually. Next I'll show you how to apply effect plugins to specific regions within your tracks using selection-based processing. First I'll select several guitar regions, then in the track editor I'll go to the functions menu and choose selection-based processing. The selection-based processing controls give you two independent effects chains where you can apply up to 15 plugin effects simultaneously. Then use the pre-listen button to test drive your effects before applying. This is a great way to change up your sound between different parts of a song without affecting the entire track. When you're finished, you can click the apply button to render your effects. The last new feature I'll demonstrate gives you the flexibility to create multiple arrangements within a single track using track alternatives. In the track menu, choose Show Track Alternatives. On the track header, click the Track Alternative menu. Here you can choose to create a new track or duplicate the existing track. In this case, I'll duplicate the track and select a different percussion loop from the same family. I'll follow the same steps again to create a third track alternative. Track alternatives give you instant access to your different versions of your tracks during playback and mixing. Now that you've seen some of Logic Pro 10.3's new features, you can try them out on your own system. Stay tuned for more in-depth tutorials on track alternatives, selection-based processing, and other Logic Pro tricks and techniques. I'm Mary Plummer, and thanks for watching.